The Donau Auen National Park. Here, the four seasons of the year can be experienced from within a dynamic landscape that is subject to constant change. After spring follows summer in the most important floodplain reserve in Central Europe. Autumn is also an impressive time in this natural floodplain of the Danube that is located in the border region that lies between Austria and the Slovak Republic. In winter all is tranquil. Mother Nature takes a break and then the circle of life begins all over again. We commence our exploration of Dono Auer National Park in Schönau on the Danube. The park was founded in 1996 and the few villages within this protected area are well versed in the importance of conservation. In spring, nature awakens from its wintry sleep and the fruit trees of numerous cultivated settlements begin to blossom. At first sight, little indicates that this is one of the last natural paradises in Europe. In the pastures, grazing horses look well contented give the impression that they were here long before this region was transformed into a national park. Farmers work on the fields that surround the park, land that extends for 9,300 hectares, one of the world's largest natural floodplains. It's difficult to believe that this landscape was once threatened by the construction of a hydroelectric power plant and water reservoir. However, much was done to prevent this from happening, and now its future is assured. In spring, this river floodplain that connects the metropolises of both Vienna and Bratislava is sparse and leafless, but it does contain various flowers. Floodplains have become few and far between in Europe, but here the rivers have been regulated and flow in streets-like canals, which facilitates navigation. but also to prevent floods that previously made settlement close to the riverbanks almost impossible. However, this also had a negative effect. Precious natural habitats have been destroyed, but these floodplains east of Vienna have been saved due to conservation-aware citizens. The Danube is the lifeline of this floodplain landscape, a green wilderness beside the remarkable Danube. The rise and fall of the water level in the flooded areas determines the rhythm of life in the floodplains. Nature slowly stirs. The many river tributaries and pools are the ideal habitat for rare animal and plant life. Mm. 
Birds of prey circle above the jungle-like forests in search of their nests from the previous year. The alternating forest landscapes and canals are ideal for these hunters of the skies. They clearly approve of the park. A system of natural biotopes covers the landscape. On the opposite bank of the Danube is Fishermend, a small town on the Fisher River that enters the Danube here. The town has a long history. In 1051, Emperor Heinrich III had a church built that was renovated in 1896 during the reign of Emperor Franz Josef I. The city's history dates back to Roman times when military camps were built here outside the gates of Vindobona, as shown by archaeological findings. In 1072, another church was built on the right-hand side of the fisher, and Fishermend Village was born, along with the ferry that crosses the Danube to Orta. When in 1529 the Turks invaded to as far as Vienna, besieging the city, this region also suffered. And the descendants of those who experienced the terrible hostilities were forced to endure yet another siege in Vienna 150 years later. Dark times. The small Fischer River is only one of many inlets that flow into the Danube. It's in stark contrast to the stagnant waters of the floodplains. When flooded, this small body of water becomes part of a large flood zone that has stretched across the landscape since time immemorial. As the water spreads from the mud, new sediment is formed that is ideal for nature's continuing success. Floodplains are also breeding areas for swans that build their nests in the reeds. In winter they're easy to spot, but in spring they become almost invisible. In an eerie of the white-tailed eagle, the first movements are visible. The adult birds can see for a great distance, but here they're safe, although it took some years until the eagles returned here to breed. Blossoms of wild garlic transform the forest bed into a shining white carpet. Later, their densely growing leaves will cover everything. The first green of the trees transforms the landscape. It's now that the floodplains show off their abundance of natural splendor. Yet at any time, all this can be destroyed by high flood levels. However, the willow trees are extremely hardy.
The silver willow is the only indigenous tree that is able to survive in the flooded areas for longer than six months. Their roots absorb nutrition and oxygen from the water. A pair of woodpeckers announce the arrival of spring. The large spotted woodpecker is the most common among the seven varieties of woodpecker that breed within the Danube flood plains. During the season, they caught and breed. Which ensures the continuation of these fascinating creatures. The dense vegetation that will soon grow here will provide much nourishment, so spring is the ideal season in which to breed. The floodplain forest will soon become a nursery for many species of wildlife. Schloss Orte is the center of the national park and the seat of its administration. It's one of the largest Renaissance buildings with a long history and several past owners. It was once a mighty fortress with a moat and drawbridge. In 1675, it was transformed into a fine castle. Close to the castle is a column of the Virgin Mary that dates back to 1711. The original water castle was destroyed during the first Turkish siege of Vienna. Now it's summer and the park's many bodies of water reflect the sunlight. The dense habitat of the Danube floodplains has been fully developed. Here, there are more than 700 varieties of ferns and flowering plants. More than 5,000 types of animals live here, including around 50 varieties of fish. On the banks of the water bodies is a profusion of vegetation. The changing water level of the Danube that can vary up to 7 meters has its effect. Subterraneously connected ancient river tributaries, ponds and puddles suddenly swell up and then gradually disappear. A symbiosis of both river and land. The large strong leaves of the cow lily are popular with frogs. Here they sunbathe and croak, calling out for attention. Humid meadows and ponds absorb the floodwaters. On its long journey, the Danube receives a huge quantity of melting water from the winter freeze. The Danube floodplains are a precious habitat, yet downstream they can also become quite treacherous. Even the smallest pools can turn into vast green carpets of duckweed and cow lilies. Silver willows extend into the deepest lying areas. The trees here grow wild. Old willows are frequently affected by sulfur polypore, but they nevertheless manage to survive.
dry and humid meadows shine out in all the splendor of summer. Insects are attracted by both color and scent, and the circle of life continues to thrive. Even in the reed areas of the pond banks, seedlings have found fertile conditions and later blossom in their well-protected surroundings. Various species of birds have adapted to life on the water and depend on the wetland habitat. The floodplains of the Danube play host to an amazing variety of bird life. The grey heron could be regarded as the heraldic figure of the park because here, in the shallow waters, it's their most important hatchery in Austria. Also, the rare European terrapin has found the perfect habitat here. It eats tiny crabs, insect larvae and amphibians. Threatened by extinction, this creature requires a good quality of water, lots of it, and sunny banks. The huge variety of species to be found in the floodplains is due to the varied landscapes to be found here. Various bodies of water and meadowland alternate with lush forests. The blossoming meadows are mowed and harvested as hay. Most of the plants grow again and some of them even blossom a second time. So the meadows are cut again in late summer. A visitor to the floodplains of the Danube is the black kite, a typical bird of prey, a migratory bird that lives here during the spring and summer months. As with most wildlife, spring and summer are the best time for breeding due to the mild climate, abundant food supply and protective vegetation. A pair of grey sea eagles circle above their eyrie, a sign that their young have hatched. Everywhere the deer search for leaves, buds and bark to eat. Furry caterpillars will soon develop into beautiful butterflies that inhabit the dry meadows. Young grey sea eagles are a wonderful sight. They perch on the edge of their eyrie, hungrily awaiting more food. Exhausting work for their parents, but there's always a good supply. The menu is quite extensive. Fish, crabs, frogs, grasshoppers and other inhabitants of the marsh area all add up to a tasty menu. The eagles fly above ponds and pools continuously in search of food for their young.
At a strategic location on the southern banks of the Danube, the Romans left a rich legacy at the junction of the routes of both the Bernstein and Limes. In Petrino is an open-air museum of the Roman settlement of Carnuntum that was once the biggest settlement in Pannonian. 60,000 people lived here. A summit conference of the powerful once took place here during which the partitioning of the Eastern and Western Roman Empire was debated and when an emperor was crowned. This region has been excavated since the 16th century. The then fourth largest city north of the Alps was both a military base and a city. This is an example of how wealthy Romans once lived. little imagination, the luxuries of Roman life become evident. Eckhart Saal, that is situated within the southern March field on the northern edge of the park, is at its most beautiful during the autumn. The village is surrounded by fields and meadows, so it's not surprising that flowers also grow in front of the houses. This village street was first mentioned in 1180. But its name became famous due to a building, Castle Eckartsal. Originally it was built as a four-sided moated castle that was transformed into a hunting seat. The knights of Eckartsal were robber knights. They purchased the land around the castle and had the right to hold markets there. Later followed other landowners. In 1760, the Habsburgs took over the castle and made many alterations to it until their abdication in 1918. The red deer is the largest animal of the floodplains. It's indigenous to this region. Here, the deer are far more hardy than those that live in the mountains. The mountain deer once used to come down to the valleys of the floodplain in winter. With ripe fruit and richly coloured leaves, the floodplain forest prepares itself for its winter rest. The colours of autumn are remarkable. All gradually stops growing. Leaves are discarded. Everything returns to silence. In just a few weeks, the almost tropical abundance of green becomes transformed into scant branches. And brown shining leaves float in countless pools of water. When sunlight falls on certain areas, colour seems to explode in the light. Now, migratory birds prepare for their departure. Mm -hmm. 
However, someone is still active. Piled up branches and water dams are a sure sign of its presence. The beaver had been extinct for a century. Its beautiful fur and the secretion of its glands for medicine made it a worthwhile prize for hunters. However, it was subsequently reintroduced east of Vienna. The beaver once lived in the north in all of the large rivers on whose banks grew soft timber. The ideal habitat for the beaver. Now the trees in the forests of the floodplains lose all of their leaves. No other habitat in Central Europe changes its appearance so often and so dramatically as here. The rhythm of the high and low water levels creates change. And it's these changes that guarantee the survival of the floodplains. The transformation produces a dynamic river landscape and essential habitats for rare and threatened plant and wildlife. Floods are an essential force that although destructive also create brand new habitats for wildlife. The Danube floods the meadows. and it also floods the backwaters and the pools. So they're provided with fresh water and new nutrient-rich sediment. The indigenous birds enjoy the last berries prior to winter, during which insects for food will be scarce. The Eurasian wild boar also inhabits the Danube floodplains, the original species of all the boars that live in the forests of Europe. The adult wild boar measures up to two meters in length, is powerful and has a large head. Omnivores with reddish-brown cetaceous hair. Wallowing in mud is one of their favorite activities, as well as the search for food. Wild sars and their young live in groups. When not in the breeding season, the adult male is a loner. While the boars wallow in the mud on the banks of a pond, an egret stalks through the shallow water next to them. It frequently plunges down to catch fish, which sometimes frightens the young boars. The boars withdraw tentatively and leave the pleasures of the pond to this proud hunter. With the first cold nights in September and the approach of the equinox, it's a time of adventure in the Danube floodplains, the rotting season.
the strong male stag roams the forests and claims its territory that it savagely protects against all rivals. After breeding, the herds separate and the males leave the herd and venture alone, always ready to fight would-be usurpers. The other animals remain unfazed by their battles. They enjoy the last warm days of the year, though the stags roam around restlessly, always on the prowl. Driven by sexual instinct and pride, they seem to forget their natural caution. The season changes to winter and becomes colder. The appearance of the landscape changes with each passing day. Many migratory birds have already left to fly south and their vanished song leaves an emptiness in the floodplains. Midges, spiders, caterpillars and the entire crawling animal kingdom has withdrawn into fissures in the ground of the trees. The floodplains are changing. Large sections of nature are now ready for their winter's sleep. From the floodplain forest architecture, only a skeleton of its former existence remains and reflects its beauty and variety in the region's water. At sunset, cormorants gather on the same sleeping trees. They remain here all winter. The first small ponds are already frozen and the reeds seem to grow out of the ice. A thin layer of snow covers both the forest bed and the bark of the trees. Ice and snow force the local wildlife to sleep. The trees are bare and the remaining birds can no longer hide among the leaves. But all is well, all is protected. The water close to the banks of the Danube is covered with snow like a white ribbon. The large river flows slowly and majestically on its way. The frozen water near the river banks is inhabited by gulls. This is their season. They like the cold weather. Now more waterfowl visit the Danube. Flocks of ducks inhabit the ice-free river because its tributaries are already frozen. In the floodplains, nature has fallen into a deep sleep. Only the larger bodies of water remain ice-free. but they also eventually begin to freeze. Ducks use every available open space in the water because they prefer not to go out onto the main river.
Next, the ice creeps over the banks, and strange shapes transform the wetland into a whitish-blue fairy tale landscape. The winter holds the Danube floodplains firmly in its grasp, and the last brown leaves will soon fall from the trees. The landscape looks quite magical, and the frozen brown reed creates a winter wonderland right in front of our eyes. Everything happens slowly now and is almost totally inert. Nothing is hidden, because there are no leaves on the trees. Each branch is visible. Even the beaver's den shows no traces of activity, although the nearby trees contain many a bite mark. Indeed, the trees demonstrate the impressive bite of the beaver, a creature that measures around a meter long and weighs around 30 kilograms. A clear winter's day and sunset in the Donar Arn must be among the most beautiful experiences in the natural world. The branches of the bare trees reflect in the last open water holes. And cormorants gather once again in their sleeping places on the tall trees. They try many branches before they finally find the most comfortable one on which to fall asleep. The entrance to the beaver dens that are dug into the muddy banks are well camouflaged beneath the surface of the water, a secure and well-protected hiding place. When snow falls, the floodplains disappear beneath a thick layer. The contrast with the green dense jungle that is here in summer could not be greater. The snow makes even the smallest branches visible. They bend under their heavy load. On branches that contain small buds, the snowflakes create incredible works of art, each one different from the other. Now the tiny pools and puddles are no longer visible. Their surfaces are totally frozen and covered with snow. Everything has become solid. Even on the tops of the reeds, snow has formed tiny sculptures that look like little balls of cotton wool that wave in the gentle breeze. Now only a few locations contain ice-free water holes. In the clear water of this biotope, the bent reeds are easy to discern.
Wet snow, and especially the hoarfrost that seems to grow on the bare tree branches during foggy, freezing cold nights, turns the forest into a world of sparkling crystals. The small ice crystals glimmer in the cold, although their life is cut short by the changing weather. On the March River that forms the border to March Field, there are several expanses of ice. In some winters, it freezes completely. In the large flood plains of the March Field, the valleys of both the Danube and the March River unite. The flood plain forests frame the plain fields like green colored walls. When the inlets of the Danube freeze in winter, it becomes difficult for the waterfowl to find food. Here, the floodplains are different. The side canals of the march are not tangled, but well-defined. Swans and ducks gather here in these calm and mainly ice-free areas to enjoy the last beams of sunlight. The wildlife is accustomed to the changing seasons and they adapt to each one. It's the rhythm of nature. After the silence and calmness of winter follows a new beginning in spring. Life in the floodplains of the Danube is well and truly determined by the four seasons. Its plant and animal kingdoms have each settled here in peace and harmony. A natural paradise and natural survival at its most impressive.